the most difficult questions for Darren and me to answer every year is, what should I use for a row spacing in soybeans? And to take it one step further, what should I plant for a population? All I can tell you is there's a lot of variants. We kind of want to talk through some of the different situations and what might possibly fit for you and your farm. Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about our farm for just a second here, Brian. We've got 30 inch rows that we could do, and, and we often do 30 inch row soybeans. We also could do them in 10 inch rows, and we did some of each this year. Now, part of it we did in the same field where we did 10 inch versus 30 inch. Others, it was a field by field or a variety by variety kind of thing. And uh, this year, one of our biggest fears happens to come, and that is soybean white mold or sclerotinia white mold. And when we have diseases like white mold, we think, well, the wider rows are going to be better for us. Now, in the absence of disease, a lot of times we'll say, well, the narrow rows are going to be our best. So uh, there are definitely some lessons that we learned this summer. Yeah, our top yield in our operation this year was just over 79 bushels to the acre. That was actually a road soybean field, so in 30 inch rows. Our next highest yielding field was between 76 and 77. That was in the drill. So, I mean, both ways we had really good yield and we can go kind of across the board. It was staggered a little bit in terms of, uh, okay, this one was a really good yielder, but that was drilled. Oh, and this other field, I guess it was really good too in 30 inch rows. The white mold thing absolutely does make a difference. So what a lot of people are doing if they're worried about white mold is they're going to the wider rows and then also cutting back population some. We don't like to get too carried away with cutting populations. And we realize sometimes with 80,000 or even 100,000 plants, you can get top yields. But in a lot of cases, we're planting around 140,000 seeds per acre in road beans, maybe 140 to 160 in drilled beans, because we get worried about, well, let's say we get a little hail or some adverse weather thing happens. We don't get a perfect stand. We lose a little bit in germination. Any of these different things could happen to us. And all of a sudden, our numbers start dwindling. So even though we planted 140,000, it's real easy to get down to 110 or 120,000, and you don't have a lot of cushion left. All right, I'll give you a couple of reasons for planting a higher population. Brian said, well, we don't want to end up with too uh, low a population out there where we have a poor stand. We've got to have enough seeds out there to get that push. If you ever get some crusting or have some issues popping through heavy residue, you need to have more seeds per acre to accomplish that. The other thing you need more seeds for is weed control. Let's face it. Resistant weeds are a terrible problem across the country. And if you've got a real thin stand out in the field, even if it's intentional, even if you tried to plant 110 or 120,000 and every seed came up, look out there in your stand during the season, you'll see some gaps. You'll see some sunlight getting all the way through down to the soil. And when you've got that, that'll allow for weed germination even mid to late season where you start to see those weeds popping up late after your residuals have run out. When you plant a thicker population, when you get a thicker stand, it's just black and it's dark underneath there and we don't see as much weed pressure coming late. One other thing, and this might not be that big a deal to you, but it's just the ease of combining. What we often hear from people is, hey, if I've got drilled beans, 10 inch row beans, seven inch, whatever it is, it's just a little easier in combining in general. I can go just about any direction I want to, not a real big issue. The other thing is we quite commonly will see, hey, if we're having some lodging issues, it's a little worse in 30 inch rows than it would be in that drill because one plant can kind of support the other plant and keep it from tipping all the way over in the drilled situation. The data between different row spacings kind of varies from year to year depending on the weather and everything else, but in general we see good yields in that 15 and 20 inch row spacing. That would probably be the ideal spacing, but you can look in your area for, for studies that pertain to the varieties that you may be planting. And also the Iowa Soybean Association has the on-farm network, which is, has got some fantastic uh, material there right on their website. You can take a look and see what the comparisons were for this year and for previous years. All right, and here's where I'm going to disagree with Darren. I don't think 15 or 20s is the right way to go. I think if you've got almost no disease and you're going to broadcast your fertilizer, you go with the drill. So 7 inch or 10 inch rows. If you want a strip till like we do on a percentage of our acres, then we're banding fertilizer and we can put that right where we're going to plant that 30 inch row. 
Also, if I've got a little more disease pressure, which we will commonly have a little further east in the United States, hey, I like that 30 inch row, I think that's gonna be a winner. So I'm actually gonna lean way to the one side in 30 inch rows or way to the other side in 10 inch rows. I'm probably not gonna go with that thing in the middle 15 to 20. So here you can kind of see, uh, yep, we've got all across the board, we got every different row spacing covered. But I think the thing Darren and I definitely agree on is don't cut your population too low. You got to make sure you have good crop canopy and you want to have a nice stand so you can get a good yield at the end of the year. Well, maximizing your yield will certainly help you maximize your profitability as well. And one way to get that accomplished is to control our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop it later in the show.